Okay, our next talk will be by Gwenelle Gilovec, and he's talking to us about platform independent CPU FPGA co-design. Thank you. Um, this talk with is about this, uh, this work, this uh, ecosystem. We have developed a, an ecosystem to be able to, um, to, to assemble and generate uh, design in the FPGA and uh, uh, using the CPU, for, for example, on the Zinc board, the CPU to configure the design and to configure each block at the runtime. It's possible to modify some parameters in live. Uh, it's uh, fully pipelined. It's not no, uh, no FIFO, nothing. It's just a sample arrive is used. So uh, we try, at possible, to avoid uh, using RAM to simplify design. Um, since we use a CPU with Linux, this ecosystem complies with the structure of an architecture of operating system. We have a drive uh, IP, IP are connected to the CPU to communicate with respect of system and the, in the better way we have, we provide driver for these IPs. And finally, some, some IPs are some complex uh, configuration, so we provide again um, library to avoid to duplicate piece of code. It's more the user has to focus on the design, on the application, and nothing else. Uh, the last wish about this framework <laughs> is to be, as possible, independent of the uh, hardware. The same design must be generate for a Zinc platform, from, uh, for a Cyclone 5 platform, and maybe other new one existing. We have validated, it's not exhaustive uh, on Zinc, on a, um, Cyclone 5 with some different board, it's the other board with other uh, hardware, but it's um, some ID. It's not the it's not alone, there are uh, other e ecosystems. The first one, uh, of course, is the uh, ETUS RFNOC used in the USRP. It's a great thing because um, we, your um, USRP has a firmware like a toolbox with some um, IPs available to be used. Uh, it's possible to configure which um, processing is done in the FPGA, which processing is done in the CPU by just adding RefNUC block or uh, new radio block. Um, but if your design has no an IP you need for your specific application, you need to generate a new firmware with this IP. And the, the, the RefNUC structure as a limited um, slot available to add your, your or IPs, five or seven, I don't remember exactly. Uh, and I have tried to use uh, a RefNOC on a Z board with an uh, A2D converter. Finally, the FPGA part, it's okay. It's not really hard, but UHD, I never, it's a fail. Uh, um, UHD do some assumption about the hardware. You have an EDUPROM to uh, detect the motherboard, the daughter board. You need to have a uh, take chain, a rake chain, and finally it's just too complex for some small design. So it's really good, but with USRP. And another um, ecosystem framework is uh, Pavel Domin, Red Pita and Not. Uh, it's this uh, ecosystem has been present here. Uh, the good thing about this ecosystem is uh, the repository provides some already available design. You have just to do some make and you have uh, SD card ready to be used. Each project has a documentation with everything and it's directly compatible with the um, new radio. Finally, uh, Osmo is there as a client for uh, Red Pitaya um, CPU server part, and you have a Red Pitaya exactly as a, a DVB-T key, uh, USRP or another. But it's dedicated to the Red Pitaya platform, and it's more or less limited to the um, already available project. S it's to move from another board on, um, or to create your, uh, um, 
your safe project, it's uh, less documented. Okay, now the um, ecosystem looks like this. We have the IPs, the IPs as a specific repository, the IPs is connected to the CPU using driver to communicate, uh, library or not, and device tree because uh, with the SOC system, the way to describe a platform is a device tree, and this overlay is used to happen the default runtime um, um, device tree. And finally, you provide some tools to, uh, to, to build the application, to provide some uh, wrapper, to, to generate some part of design. First thing, most maybe the most important part is the FPGA and the IP. Uh, it's for a simpl simplified simulation, we are split between the um, impl implementation part, the algorithm implementation, and the rest of the communication for the configuration of the design. Um, exactly as um, new radio, we use a custom interface. This allows the user to plug one block to connect one block to one other. And it, uh, thanks to this interface, it's OK. It's um, the coherent data stream. For the user, it's just a wire like this one. But to provide more information, we have in this interface this series of signals, uh, data, control, and uh, clock and reset to be to be sure to have a correct coherence with the cross-clock domain. More precisely about content, you have on a complex, you have a I and Q data bus, on real just one data, and enable to, uh, to specify when a new data is available to be processed. And you have some uh, control signals, start of frame, stop of frame. Uh, finally, um, an I, uh, an A 2D converter or D 2 A converter has uh, just an infinite data stream, no start, no stop, nothing. But when you uh, have some uh, design, with uh, when we, we want to propagate data only on the event, it's mandatory to know the start sample, the end sample of the data set. It's exactly the same for, for example, the FFT. The FFT has the start frequency, stop frequency. And this two signal allows to simplify the logic per uh, IP to handle this uh, data set. OK, we have the IP. Now you, we must connect the IP and generate the design. It's possible, of course, to use the graphical approach with the Vivado or with uh, Quartus and QSys, but all um, vendor tools provide um, some procedure to build a design using TCL. The, the interest of this is small, able to, uh, to version, and it's a great thing. But Vivado provides some function, create DB, uh, create BD cell, etc. It's a specific pro procedure for Vivado. It's the same thing for Quartus. And finally, uh, Vivado provides need one TCL file to generate everything. Um, Quartus needs two files to generate everything. So we have added our procedure and some uh, make file to generate. This, for example, this procedure is implemented in the Vivado context, in the Quartus context, if you want to add a new vendor tool, you need just to fill this procedure to be able to build um, the, the design for a new platform with a new tool. Um, I've do some tests with two different FPGA and two different um, vendor tools. The same design, the same application is able to work in all cases. Some stuff are just regenerate for each platform, but it's not a problem, it's, it's just generate. The rest is perfectly compatible. This the design is just a sub part of a project. A project like, look like this. You have the project directory, subdirectory, where we store uh, everything about the design. Uh, once the design built, it's possible to use 
uh, TCL script to analyze XPair or um, um, vi um, Quartus equivalent to um, extract which IPs are connected to the CPU, the base address for each of them to generate an XML file. This XML file is used by a tool to generate a template of application. And the last thing for the user is just to create a, a C C++ or Python file to drive, to configure everything in the FPGA. This, this set is generated by module generator. You have an XML file, you have a project name, you have an IP, a second IP. IP is the name of the IP in the repository. And for each of them, you have instance IP with a specific name, with a specific address based on this. It's possible to generate le, the script. Script is to simplify the, um, the, to, long, uh, to simplify the run of the application. You, have, you copy the bitstream, you flash the, the FPGA, you, fla you update the device tree, you append your device tree with your specific case, and you load um, driver mandatory for this specific project. First one. Second, device tree. You need to append and you find Exactly, you open the um, FPGA full. It's a node um, dedicated to handle the, F the FPGA. You have the firmware name. You have um, one driver with this same ba base address. is exactly the same. And finally, a makefile. Makefile is just used to cross-compile the application, to compile everything, and to install in the board everything. It's finally all about the ecosystem. Just we provide this block. It's not all block available, but it's a um, subset. You have a local oscillator, frequency transposition. You have the, um, an IP used to handle A to D converter and D to A converter for the RedPitaya. You have um, a sound card. You have um, uh, some uh, block used to uh, start the propagation when a specific event appear on the block on the uh, pin of the FPGA for a trigger event. You have a radio frequency signal, CA code used for uh, uh, GNSS GPS, F fear filter, you have fear filter real for interface real, complex for interface complex, etc. Some PRN generator, a cross correlator again used to, for example, with the GPS, and some utilities to add a, a specific constant to all sample received. It's exactly an offset. You have other subtractor. You add one input to the other input, mean on a simple accumulator, and some utilities convert from one interface to an other interface, a custom interface, dupe, because uh, interface has, is one to one, and sometimes we want to have one too many. So we have this to allow these possibilities. Uh, expander shifter is uh, for um, bit, uh, bit manipulating, for sh bit shifting or expanding. Uh, switch is just uh, a select. You have two input, you have a mux, finally and some uh, interface between uh, our custom interface and Axie interface used, for example, when you need to use a FIFO provided by, by um, Xilinx to, um, to do a cross-clock domain. Now, we have seen the um, ecosystem, but why doing with? First one is the GPS decoding. Uh, the idea is we, ha we have a uh, Pluto SDR. The Pluto SDR is able to directly sample the signal. We have a satellite constellation with the same carrier frequency, but with a Doppler shift, and with um, each satellite has a unique PRN code. But when you use the Pluto SDR, like this one, uh, with the stock firmware, the, finally, the Pluto SDR do quite nothing. They receive data, transmit data, and it's all. Uh, to, to detect which satellite light has present, you need to loop on the frequency, you need to loop on the PRN, so you need to cross-correlate the signal with, with all possible PRN code. 
with a GNU radio on CPU, it takes one or two seconds per satellite. The idea is to um, update the firmware by adding our specific IP to do exactly the same thing, but in processing. This looks like this. You have your a ref front end, the, um, uh, the local oscillator of, of the RF front end takes some time to, to reconfigure, to be reconfigured, so we have added uh, NCO, a local oscillator, a mixer to do a second step, a second step frequency transposition. You have your, our uh, CA code generator. This block provides all possible um, CA code in parallel. So we use the, uh, user, the user space to configure uh, our CA code to move from to loop frequency and to select which parent we want to use. And you have the cross correlator, and the result is just sent to the RAM and received from the CPU. Thanks to. Uh, finally, the uh, most important thing we have added this part, but we don't break anything. The Pluto works exactly like uh, with um, default firmware, but we are with a bonus block. Thanks to, th to this, uh, to this um, modification, it's possible to divide by five the time to process all satellite for all frequency. But now, uh, but we are just limited by the, um, uh, the zinc. The FPGA part is a bit small, so it's not possible to add more than one cross correlator in the FPGA. So we have moved on the analog device uh, board with the biggest FPGA to be able to cross correlate all satellite at the same time. It's a work in progress. Currently, the design fit in the FPGA in parallel on the official um, data stream, but we need just to verify it's working. Next demonstration is um, it's more funny de demonstration. Uh, the, again, the Pluto SDR do quite nothing, and uh, but this board uh, use built root to generate the uh, firmware, the root file system, the Linux system, etc. Uh, built root support GNU radio, so it's possible to add GNU radio uh, um, in the firmware on the board. It's it's we have do this and. Um, the, the second idea is to have really totally um, embedded. So we have added a sound card in parallel in the FPGA. And finally, we have an application, C++, Python, what you want, to just to do this, low pass filter, WFM receiver, and output on the sound card. This looks like this. You have the default RX chain, the IIO used as a sync, by, uh, as a source, sorry, by GNU Radio. The process is done by GNU Radio, and an uh, audio sync is used connected to the ALSA um, framework. We provide a driver compatible ALSA to communicate with the Sigma Delta IP in the FPGA or, and uh, uh, RC filter. This is uh, using this approach. It's just due to the small amount of uh, available pin for FPGA. So, and for the fun, sorry. Je n'ai juste, I have just launched a specific application by providing a frequency, and it's all, and the, the PC do nothing, just connect with the SSH, and it's all. Everything is done in the Pluto SDR board. The reception, the processing, and the output on the audio sync. Now, to conclude, this is a um, flexible framework. Demonstration, um, we have demonstrated with some um, specific design end-to-end, -end, but we have um, Use our approach with the uh, analog device environment to merge, to mix 
our approach and analog device approach. And it's definitely working. Um, it's a platform independent. It's possible to use with uh, Cy um, Altera, Xilinx, maybe other. Uh, it's uh, in respect the structure of a Linux system with where the, um, the IP is um, located is exactly as um, all controllers around the core in the SOC, uh, SOC component. Uh, perspective, the first one is to f finalize uh, GNSS parallel gold code, verify and um, push on the GitHub for uh, everyone. To improve documentation, uh, some part has quite, I suppose, well documented. There are some tutorials for RedPTR, for Pluto S0, but there are some missing parts uh, around many uh, TCL approach, and it's a uh, work in progress. And the um, final thing, uh, currently for uh, RISC 5 seems to be uh, important um, concurrent to ARM processor, so it may be interesting to try to demonstrate with a soft core RISC 5 uh, instead of an hard, hard core ARM, of course. Uh, we have uh, the built root, uh, built root uh, extension uh, for the Red Pitaya. Yeah. Again, same thing for the Pluto SDR with um, <coughs> configuration, default configuration, a configuration with uh, new radio already uh, enabled. And of course, the GitHub, of, uh, the Oskim Digital GitHub, where we everything is available. Just mandatory to git clone request sweep and, and to read doc tutorials to see how to um, start with this ecosystem. Thank you very much. UIO, I, I use UI, UIO, no, no, currently uh, I'm, currently I use, um, um, for actually for the, 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 for some block, I use a specific dev card device, but it's true, I need to use IIO, UIO, or um, some specific um, structure of the kernel. Um, the configuration is done in uh, user space by the user space. Is it? Yeah, my question is how much uh, of the configuration of the IP store is done in kernel land and how much is done in user land? Uh, the repetition between, uh, for configuration between user land and kernel land to configure the IP. Uh, the, um, definitively, the, the, the driver is. Um, know how to communicate with the IP. But for f depending on the IP, a part is done by the user space. For example, the NCO, the NCO, you have an input frequency, you, know, you have an output frequency, you have the f um, um, phase accumulator, and this is done in the user space through lib library. For, for the fear filter, you have just a set of data. You write, you use the write on the uh, pseudo, uh, on the um, file descriptor, and the kernel do everything about that. It depends. Sorry. So you compared uh, the speeds of Kimmel tape to uh, receive DPS, and you compared uh, your FPGA uh, implementation to it. But did you also have, like, for example, like new radio graphs to compare the decoder speed? Um, the comparison, the speed comparison between uh, the hardware uh, imp implementation and the software implementation. Yeah. Uh, Finally, in the FPGA, we are just limited by the 
uh, input uh, the sample rate. If you if if uh, the sample rate is one mega sample, we have one microsecond um, between two new samples. If you need to cross correlate uh, about one kilo point, you have just one millisecond. It's not possible to reduce this because this uh, the FF front end the limitation. And the, finally, it's not just not mandatory to to quick to speed up this because it, it's um, the fastest way, the fastest due to the input frequency. And uh, the real gain is after that you have result in the CPU, not you have sample to compute. It's just a latency in, in between the RF front end and the CPU. With a classic, uh, classical approach with uh, Octave or uh, you need to store a big sample uh, data set. You process this. It's just the big difference. It's okay. After you, it's possible to use a GPU to uh, to improve this, but you have always the acquisition time before able to be pro uh, to process data.